What's going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode in the Road to Glory career mode series. It will be post commentary today, I'm not going to lie, I wasn't feeling the greatest when I recorded this. So uh, yeah, I couldn't actually do it live. But we're here anyways to show you what happened. Obviously taking it month by month of this series until we reach the end where we'll face and play with England in the European Championships of 2024. So yeah, that'll be all to come at the end of this season. And after that, seasons and series pretty much done. But... Showing you the first two games of this month then, they were both simmed. It was a game against uh, Bournemouth and then a game against uh, FC Basel. Both of which were pretty irrelevant, of course. Against Bournemouth, I, I felt we were going to win it, so I went ahead and simmed that. And then against Basel, it was the final group stage game of our Champions League. We couldn't be knocked out. We were through to the knockout rounds and I decided to go ahead and sim it. And you'll, uh, you'll see later on, maybe in the next episode, who we have pulled. Because that will be the next month to come. And I can confirm it will actually be Atletico Madrid. If you follow the Celta Vigo series, you'll know that we did actually just face Atletico Madrid in a Champions League final. So uh, I feel like I played a lot against Atletico Madrid recently. But nevertheless, into game number one we go. And all three of the games in the episode today are going to be in the Premier League. As we're in search or trying to secure a quadruple. The Premier League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup and the Champions League. And as it actually stands, we're doing okay on that front. We're in the semis of the Carabao Cup. The FA Cup is to begin in the next episode as well against Wigan. Uh, the Premier League we're top of and the Champions League we're into the next round. So all things are looking rosy at the moment. And I mentioned in the last episode as well how good Kylian Mbappe is on this game. And he is just sensational. He's so fast, so clinical that when he got through against Liverpool one-on-one, -on -one, you just had to bet on him to score the goal inside five minutes. And if you actually take a look at the way that one went in, if you go back, we won it on the edge of our penalty area. And within a few passes later, we're inside the Liverpool penalty box. And that's the difference, I think, between us and quite a few of the teams that we face in the Premier League. We go about our business very quick, knocking the ball around fast and using the pace that we have to get in behind. Whereas sometimes I feel like other teams in our division, they try and play that extra pass that they just simply don't need to make. And so inside six minutes, a Kylian Mbappe opener gave us a 1-0 advantage. And uh, not too long later, created another chance. A lovely cross whipped in by Pulisic. Mbappe may not be the tallest man out there, but he's certainly the hungriest. As he goes in, gets his head on the end of it and makes it 2-0 to crew. He just fights for everything. And that's what I like in a player. Willing to fight for every ball, even if he potentially shouldn't be able to win it. Willing to take on players. And Mbappe, as I mentioned last episode, is just way too good. So, 20 minutes on the clock. Booze ringing around Anfield. Crew 2, Liverpool 0. In definite need of trying to change this one around. You can see me on the touchline. Obviously very happy with the way things were going. Until Liverpool got a chance. 25 minutes on the clock. Nicely worked as well as they found its way through. Vieto into Chivrella. He played it into Coutinho who found the top corner. And I had a little bit of problems with this goal because I looked at the uh, the attempted save or their lack of by Donnarumma. And I've got to say this, got to do much better. The shot, fair enough. It's decent for Coutinho, but you can see from this angle, he doesn't even really give it a go here, Donnarumma. He just kind of stands there, watches it go over his head and says, there you go. So just like that, the, even though we had the uh, the ability to go 2 in front, we were now back to only a one goal advantage at 2-1. So we needed to find that second, make me feel confident. A lucky bounce through as Christian Pulisic gets in, takes it round his man, finds the bottom corner. And we were able to restore it very, very quickly after finding uh, Liverpool going in, uh, a goal into the game. So, yeah, it pretty much was... I knew every single time we went forward, there was always going to be a chance and that we'd actually get a shot and be able to find the target. It was whether or not the keeper was going to save it or if we were just going to have an off day finishing wise. So the first three chances that we created, we were able to score. It's not difficult when you've got an 88 rated striker, a 90 rated right winger and a 94 rated left winger. You know, when you've got those sort of ratings on the pitch, you're pretty much betting that you're going to score. But you've still got to give credit where it's due. We were clinical today. And you may notice as well, there was a red card in the game. It was for Kylian Mbappe. I, uh, I took out a man. I, I forgot to show you in the editing. I apologise for that. But basically, I got a bit frustrated. Lost the ball in an area. Took or uh, pressed the slide tackle button. And didn't get anywhere near the ball. And just took the man out from behind. And so it was, uh, it was a straight red for Kylian Mbappe in that game. Which was a little bit frustrating. So he missed the next one against Brighton in the Premier League. Which we were away from home. Simmed it. We came away with a 1-1 draw. The cost of scoring for us. After that, we faced Chelsea at home. Again, decided to sim this one, even though they were third. I just felt like the home advantage could bring us through. I was wrong. Mbappe back in the team for that one. But Morata scoring the only goal of the game. And he would give Chelsea the victory. So, although we are trying to win a Premier League title, 
it's going to be a little bit more tough than I first thought. I felt like we could sim every game, walk over the league and just batter everybody. But clearly, I'm wrong because we've just run against Brighton and just lost to Chelsea. So maybe I need to rethink my entire situation, even with the ridiculous team that we have got. So I decided to play the next one at St. James's Park, Newcastle United, the opponents. And I just felt like, again, we were, we were so good going forward that the chances would come. In the first chance, 12 minutes into it, should have been a goal. Mbappe missing, which is a rare thing that I... Uh, don't normally say when he threw on goal, but it's a good save from Sells. But the power that Mbappe got behind it, you could see Sells couldn't actually keep hold of it. He just had to whip it over the top of the crossbar and hope that it wasn't going to go in. And then not too long later, we created another chance. This time, Mbappe took it. You can't allow him to have two chances inside your box because he's going to take one of the two. Lovely for football as well for us to get through. Lewis Cook, nice ball through. First time finish, bottom corner. And it was uh, Crew who had the lead again. Pretty much picking up where we left off against Liverpool. Dominant, creating chances, not giving much away. And when we found Pulisic to make it number three, he would square it across to an unmarked Fratchak, who should have scored. A little bit worried about the pole. He's finishing a little bit off at the moment. That's one way of putting it. And I'm slightly worried about that fact because he's also complaining about the fact that he doesn't feel like he's getting enough game time with the Costa coming in and potentially replacing him. But you've got to score the chances that you get, mate. Otherwise, you will be replaced. It's Mbappe... He doesn't miss, does he? He just does not miss. Inside again, 2-0. Didn't even have a lot of time to think about this one either. Takes one touch, then on the left foot, curls it past the goalkeeper. 21 minutes to go. Crew 2, Newcastle 0. It's so difficult for a defender against him. They just don't get any luck whatsoever. We move the ball around quickly again, as I said. This time it's Pulisic with the through ball, but there you go. One touch Mbappe, second one to finish. And even with the sliding tackle from, I think, Jamal Lascelles, it wasn't enough and we would find the second goal. Pretty much securing the three points for Crew, But again, dominant, dominant display. We were able to create a lot, not give away too much. And I, I've got to say this. I hope for the next FIFA, they add a little bit more customization to your manager. Because it would be nice to make it look somewhat more like yourself, if that makes sense. I know it's difficult to do, but even so, just uh, add a little bit more customization. Maybe like, you know, you can with the player, for example. Add that sort of selection to it. It's not that difficult. But hey, listen... We can't complain yet. We don't know what's around the corner for FIFA 19. It is, of course, two or so months away. Next up was Arsenal at home. Again, felt confident. So I was like, we can sim this. They don't really tend to have a great team in this sort of game. But I was made to pay because a late equaliser from killing Mbappe was a reason why we ended up coming away with a point. Otherwise, would have been the 1-0 defeat. So I was nearly made to look like an absolute mug. After that was Palace. And this is the final game that you're going to witness today. In the episode, but we still have something to come. There's something huge to come. A 90-rated player will be joining us at the end of today's episode. How about that, ladies and gentlemen? You'll see that guy in a few moments' time to come. I'm excited for the future when he does join us. But, uh, yeah, it's a big money move as well. Let me say this. The first goal of the game, very unlike us. Because as we have been able to create chances by passing and, and fluid passing moves... Fratchak just decides, you know what, listen, I'm going to run straight at them. 99 pace, he's got to remember, 99 for sprint speed, 99 for acceleration. So when he does technically, you know, get going, it's very difficult to catch him. But it's just very unlike us at the moment, because as I mentioned, we're normally quite good with our passing, creating moves that way. He just decided to run straight through them, and the, uh, the finish wasn't clinical. Keeper actually did well enough to get something behind it, just couldn't keep it out. And we should have taken a second goal. Pulisic, lovely ball from Fratchak. He missed the opportunity to do so, though. And talking about wasted chances, here's another one. Mbappe through. Pulisic should score. Another good save. But as I mentioned, you know, he should finish that one off. Fratchak from distance then tries one. And again, the keeper's up quick enough to make an extra save. But come off the hour, come off the man. Captain Fantastic, Esri Konza rises highest, flicks it into the bottom corner from a corner. And uh, it was just such a good header from our captain. And we found the second goal of the game. And I knew for a fact as soon as that went in, we weren't going to lose it. Esri Konza, he's proven a dominant uh, you know, defender over the years. But with that goal going in, he just shows he has got that capability. I'm not actually sure how many goals he's scored for the club. That could be quite interesting to look back and see. But I've got to say this. I bet you he's up there with our highest appearance makers. And what a, uh, a story he has kind of had here with Cruz. Signed from Charlton early on in the series. He's won the Champions League, the Premier League, the FA Cup, the Carabao Cup with us. He's won so much. And yet, even with that, I never actually called him up to our England squad. You know, he's been our captain throughout the entirety of it. I suppose... You've got to remember as well, in the World Cup just gone, he, he was injured. So there was that to think about. 
But at the times, you know, yes, he's in it now. He's probably going to be in there for the Euros, most likely. But in terms of that one, he was injured for the World Cup just gone. So I guess that's one of the reasons why. But even so, Captain Fantastic, he does it again. Speaking of defenders, that's going to be the man that joins us. Andreas Christensen, now 90 rated. I noticed he had a minimum fee release clause in his contract set at 40-something million pounds. I thought, wait, we've got about 40-something million pounds. Let's activate that. Went and uh, had some contract talks with him. And he was happy to join us here at Crew. So, to add to Esri concert and now Via we have here as well, we are going to have a new 90-rated centre-back for the next episode. I'm excited to see how much he's going to improve our back line. Maybe now we'll get even more clean sheets as well. You know, maybe that Liverpool game would have been a clean sheet if we'd have had Christensen. But regardless, guys, that is how we'll end today's episode off. If you did enjoy it, a like, we greatly appreciate it. Apologies for it not being live. But as I said, I am suffering from a cold. I didn't really feel like I could talk for so long during this one when I was recording it. So that's why I'm choosing to do it post -com anyways. If you are new around here and like what you see, the subscribe button is down below. And I'll catch you all again tomorrow with another video. See you all then, guys. Adios.